Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another episode of Sapien Thoughts where we discuss theophilosophical issues, where we tackle the arguments of the detractors of Islam in addition to making our own arguments for the veracity of Islam. Today inshallah we're going to be dealing with a hadith uh, which references uh, Adam alayhi salam, a prophet of Islam, as being 60 cubits tall, which is like 27 meters. And they say this is unbelievable and impossible. But before we get to this hadith, let's talk about the Islamic stance on the theory of evolution. Generally speaking, talking about the theory of evolution, Muslims don't have an issue or shouldn't really have an issue with speciation, adaptation, or even uh, evolution of animals, because we believe that uh, there's nothing explicit in the Quran one way or the other. And I actually done a podcast with Abdullah al ajayri Sheikh Abdullah al ajayri is a prominent figure in Saudi Arabia, uh, who researches these matters and well published in, in this field. And uh, in my discussion with him, this was his opinion. So, which is quite frankly like 99.9 percent, .9 if we look at it from a mass perspective, really 99.9 .9 percent of the theory. The uh, the issue we have um, we take issue with, or the point of evolution, the sliver of which really diametrically opposes some of the Islamic narratives is uh, human evolution. Now, obviously, we have a narrative. We have a narrative in Islam, which is that the Adam alayhi salam was created directly, or this prophet Adam was created directly by Allah, by God Almighty. And there are many things which differentiate human beings from the rest of the animal kingdom. Morality, the, uh, the ability to question why, you know, um, this uh, many different in language, civilization, and so on and so forth. And it couldn't have been the case, we would argue, that we can actually in any way be, uh, be equated uh, to the rest of the animal kingdom. And there's something special about human beings. Allah says in the Quran that he has dignified the ch children of Adam. So we, we don't necessarily agree or disagree. We can remain agnostic as to uh, you know Darwinian evolution with other animals. But as it relates to uh, the human being, there is something special about the human being. And that is why Allah created human being directly. And uh, in this hadith, there's indication that he created Adam in uh, 60 cubits tall. Now, the question is, this seems unscientific on many grounds. And I'll tell you what, on three major grounds. Number one is biological. Number two is archaeological and or paleontological, you could say as well, from a fossil record perspective. And number three, uh, looking at the kind of uh, disparity in sizes, if we do assume that there was a human being of uh, such great magnitude in terms of size, how can we explain the fact uh, that human beings are like, uh, give or take, you know, six foot tall, give or take, you know, um, half a meter or whatever it may be, or more, right? But how can you explain this huge disparity in the fact that you're saying that you believe in Adam, who's 27 meters tall and, and, and a human being now, which is, you know, typically anything between five foot five to six foot five. And obviously there are extremities on, on both sides of that equation. There's more people that are taller than six foot five, like myself, and people that are shorter than five foot five, like uh, many, many people. So here, there's two parts of the hadith which we need to pay attention to, uh, which is the first part of the hadith talks about that Allah created Adam, uh, uh, 60 uh, cubits tall and in terms of hadith there are some narrations which don't mention this 60 cubits and that the, 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 there are some narrations that do mention the 60 cubits but we don't say that just because there are some narrations that don't mention the 60 cubits that the narrations that do mention the 60 cubits are erroneous that makes no sense actually uh, this this doesn't and some people have attempted to argue uh, that this means that this should be uh, disbanded no it doesn't mean that's not how the hadith science works so that's the first thing other people say the second part of the hadith which talks about uh, that the, 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 the creation is, um, is, is, is becoming smaller and smaller until now. They found it problematic because the, Ibn Hajar himself, he mentions how could it be the case that this is happening, right? The, the, and we can see Adam Thamud's uh, kind of uh, indwellings, the, the archaeolog archaeological remnants of their indwellings, and we can see that their houses and the, you know, the doors and so on were not so tall. And he assumed, and without, by the way, nafs and evidence, that uh, Adam and Thamud were closer to Adam than they were to us human beings. And obviously, the, the only real evidence we have anything between Nuh and Adam alayhi salam uh, 
is, there's no evidence. I mean, there's only uh, Israeliet or kind of biblical narrations. So potentially he was using those to kind of uh, raise his eyebrow, but he did not say that this hadith was mu'allal or defective, as many believe that he did. Now, having oh, because of nas reasons or co content reasons. Going now forward to answering the contentions, there are variations of this hadith which refer to fissama, okay, that this was in the heaven. Not heaven as in Jannah, but fissama. Now, obviously, if you look at the Quranic cosmology, heaven, al Jannah, is above, okay, because obviously we know that the Prophet was taken there in the Salah al Maraj. So it could be the case that this height and this mega size of 27 meters is specific to Jannah and there's nothing wrong linguistically in believing that because obviously we believe that Adam alayhi salam he started his journey yes in heaven I mean we have a whole narrative where he was in a completely different place and then Allah he sent him down to the earth he sent him down to the earth yes he's created from the elements of the earth but he was in many ways, an extraterrestrial, <laughs> because he came from a completely different dimension and he came to uh, this earth. Now, in that transition period, could he have shrunk? Could Allah have made him smaller? That's also a possibility. We're not disregarding that as a possibility, but there's no evidence of that from the Quran and Sunnah. So we can't say that that is what happened. Now, what we will say is this. Let's assume that Allah, he brought Adam down. He was 60 cubits, either in heaven and on earth or in heaven or on the earth. But let's just assume that he was 60 cubits in heaven and on the earth. So when he came down, he was also 27, 27 meters. Which, by the way, now we're starting to make assumptions which we don't necessarily need to be uh, need to make. We can say, no, this he was like that height in heaven. But, uh, and when he came on the earth, he became normal height. Th that's something you can assume from the, from the source. But let's not assume that. Let's say he was uh, 27 meters on the earth. What's the problem? What's the problem? The problem are three different things now. Number one, biology. If we use the human anatomy that we have today as the reference point, if, if, the, uh, if the human anatomy today is the reference point, how could it be that something that tall, or a human being that tall, the bone structure can maintain that kind of size, right? Because it will collapse because of the weight of the human being. Well, this is a fallacy because we're not starting with the human being today as the reference point. We're starting with, why would you start with today's human being as a reference point? The reference point is that 27 uh, meter human being that we're talking about. That's the reference point. So if someone says, well, we know that if we keep doubling sizes, as I've even heard some, some Muslims try and say, keep doubling sizes and height, then the height will be so tall and then the weight will be so much and then the bones will not be able to handle that. Density of the bones will not be able to handle that. You're using your reference point uh, as the human anatomy of today, and then do qiyas backwards, which is a qiyas mal farq, if you like, or a false type of analogy. It's a different kind, it's false kind of analogy. So that's the first problem. You can say, oh, it's inconceivable that human anatomy can, can handle that size. Well, it's only inconceivable on the basis of an analyzing today's human anatomy. That's the first thing. The second thing we may say is, someone could say, well, um, we talked about the biological problems, fossilization. How come there is no fossil record of such a huge human? The National Science Foundation says that 99.9%, percent oh 99.9% of species have not undergone fossilization. So fossilization, you expect to find one sp specimen uh, of a fossil, of a human that we don't know, tens or hundred thousand, whatever it is, years that he existed before. No way. This is like finding a needle in a haystack. It's ridiculous to expect to find fossils like this. It's, it's absolutely absurd. It's such a redundant, redundant interrogation. So that, that, that one would be put to the side. The third now interrogation is, well, how can we conceive of such a disparity between uh, humans Within this, or any kind of animal within the same species like this. They say, we don't accept that. We don't accept that you can have a 27 meter human being, and then you can have a six foot human being, and that, that disparity existed. And they say humans have been around for 350,000 years, which is, by the way, estimates we don't have to go with because they keep changing those, quite frankly. But let's just assume for the sake of argument. Are you saying to me, is my response, that you have, uh, there's no sp species within the species that exhibit this decrease in size 
this dramatic exponential decrease in size? Because I can give you an example of the dwarf elephants, which the General Proceedings National Academy of Science shows the dwarf ele elephants were 220 pounds. They, they, they went down in 800,000 years, according to uh, the journal. In 800,000 years, they went down 100 times in size. So they were, uh, they were 100 times bigger than they were. They became dwarf elephants, 220 pounds, 100 kilos, which would mean that I'm bigger than those elephants. Me, personally, the one who's talking to you. On the, imagine an elephant that I can pick up or that you can pick up. And that would be heavier to pick me up than an elephant. I mean, this is just to give you some kind of visuals here. So if you can believe in an elephant that is that size, because you're looking at the fossil record and you're making your uh, evolutionarily, uh, evolution uh, inferences, then why can you not believe in a human being that's much bigger? This is just one of many examples, but within a very short time span in evolutionary terms. So why could not that happen to the human? <laughs> I mean, if you really want to believe it on your paradigm, why could not that happen to the human being? So it's okay when you say these things, but it's not okay when we say these things. You make a mockery out of the hadith, but the hadith makes the mockery out of you because this is actually what you believe in as well. And hopefully that answers the question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.